So, today, you find me under a Mark V Golf GTI. And that little orifice is what we need to get to. So today's job is replacing the crank sensor, position sensor, as we're having quite a few issues with it. It's happened once, it's happened again two more times, so now let's get that chest sensor changed. So have we done, as we have done there is, I've done the duplicate on the throttle body, lower boot, and the one on the lower intercooler there. Don't worry about the oil coming out, that's normal. So once we've got that out of the way, this is the crank centre. So you want to unplug that, normal way, and then where the centre goes in, there's a 5 mm Allen key, which needs undoing. Undo that and put it out. So here we have the two sensors, obviously, the old one which I'm guessing what I'll probably do later on is cut the wire apart just to see what's going on in there and there's a new one this isn't a VW one because I am not paying the VW prices this is a Hella one Hella brand well known for being good with electrical parts and um, this was on GSF this was 172 pound but as GSF have their amazing um, discounts on this is only 53 pound which is a bargain so ideally yeah you want to put a Bosch on Bosch one on generally but to be fair these are simple sensors um that one has lasted 189,000 miles so it's had its time so pop this one on there you can also see this cable is actually thicker than this one so a bit slight more protection probably over the time so all we do just make sure it's got seal on it a little wearing seal sat there pop this cap off gently put it in put it all back together Right, so there we have the new sensor installed. One thing I did do on the sensor before I put it in is just put a bit of um, WD-40 on the seal just to make sure that sensor sits home in the block properly because if it doesn't, you won't get the correct reading. So clip it back on there, on the holding, and all we need now is to put the turbo pipe back on, make sure the hoses are tight, plug the map sensor in, which is the other plug up there, and that's it done. So. Excuse the dirtiness, this is a work car. Um, fantastic car, I love the Golf GTIs, as we could probably tell. Uh, Mark V GTI, 2 litre TFSI. Uh, this has had a remap in its past, so it's about 220, 230 brake maybe. Flies along, does everything it needs to do. I probably do average 600 miles a week in this. Last week I had a 950, this week I probably do the same. Just keeps going. Pretty good on fuel, to be fair as well sort of high 30 30 miles per gallon i've clocked 40 once on a long run but yeah it's a fantastic car so this one as we can see is on 189,000 miles now the reason i have had to change the cam shaft sensor crank sensor even is because months and months ago i had a problem i was <clears throat> i booted the car nailed it the revs got up to about two and a half three thousand rpm doesn't need a service. Everything sort of died. All the gut dials flicked down to zero and back up again. And I was like, whoa, what's going on? And it kept doing it bang on about two, seven, well, between two and a half and sort of 3,000 RPM. Every time I got to there, boom, car jerked um, and then the uh, needles dropped down. So I took the sensor off, had a look, couldn't see any damage to it. Plug was all right, put it back on. It hasn't done it for months. Um, the other day it did it, um, got somewhere, wouldn't start, um, drove down there. Um, and all you're getting is, all you'll get is, when you turn the engine over, you can hear it trying to fire, like it's trying to pick up and go. If the crank sensor's not getting signal, the engine will just turn over like you've got no spark plugs in it, just a, a very soft and even spin over the engine, not even trying to catch and fire. Um, so I had to wiggle around with the plug for a while, eventually got it started, then it drove fine for a while. Although sort of on and off throttle, just sort of maintaining speed, it felt a little bit jerky. Um, so got a new sensor, as I said, put it on. So all we need to do now is fire it up. So it should straight off the key, these normally do is just boom straight away. There we go. That's all we need to know about. 
idles nice, the two are dropped down a bit. So there we go. So that's the crank sensor change, quick how to. It's not a hard job, the only tools you're going to need jack and axle stand, obviously, if you're getting under the car, uh, 10 mil spanner or ratchet spanner or a little socket and ratchet, flathead screwdriver or 7 or 8 mil socket for the Jubilee clips, and then a 5 mil Allen key for the crank sensor. So, it's not a hard job. Hopefully, you can. Uh, be able to do your own crank sensor if you need to. Any questions again stick them in the comments. And that should be this car done for another X amount of thousand miles. So as you can tell by the car starting that's the crank sensor changed. So that can go in the bin. It's done its life. Probably won't put it in the bin yet. When I get bored I'll probably cut open the wires. Maybe do some resistance checks on the wires. Or to be fair I'll just stick it in the bin because like I say, high mileage car, it's done its job. Good job it's lasted this long, really. So, again, any questions, stick them in the comments. I'm happy to answer anything. Any queries you've got, your own Mark 5s if you've got them, or the similar engine platform. As you can tell from the picture of the engine bay, the car's not a show queen. The Mark 2 is the show queen and a pretty car. The Mark 5s are working, earning the money, and it does its job. As I said, it's a fantastic car. Highly underrated. I paid £1,800 for it. Tires, cam belt, probably owes me two grand and it keeps going all day long. So cheers for watching. Catch you next time.